Uh, good afternoon, guys. Uh, Coach Hutchinson here again. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, how to dissect a defense off of a dodge uh, and kind of what the Dodger should be looking at when he's reading the defense. Uh, and then I'll give you guys a quick drill. And then I got a, a video of it from uh, one of our last practices. So uh, thank you guys all for joining us today. Uh, I really, really appreciate you guys taking some time out. And then uh, Coach Burns going to follow up with a couple small parts uh, of a defense uh, that he'd like to see. So uh, with that being said, I'm going to kind of jump right to the share screen mode here. All right, and what we're going to look at is a possession here from the, uh, the PLL uh, Chaos and Redwoods game. Again, I think this might be uh, one of the last times I get rocking with this one. All right, but what we're seeing right now is out of a timeout. Uh, and, and the chaos is coming out of a timeout. Got the game back into a 5-4 game, so it's a ball game now. All right, one thing that we're seeing right here, all right, just from a, a, a sense standpoint, all right, is Pat Harbison looks to press out on Miles Jones right now. All right, and this is a great job by the chaos, not panicking and overreacting and freaking out at this point. All right, so Miles Jones is exactly what he's supposed to do to try and, you know, be cut right here and earn the ball. All right, but Pat does a really good job of sticking with him. All right, Connor Fields, instead of forcing it, you know, just throws the ball right back to where it came from. And you can see uh, once this clip gets going that this is actually where they wanted to kind of start their offense from, all right, with this guy right here. Okay, so at this point, all right, what we want to see is as this guy's dodging, all right, so I think this is Dane Smith, um, number 92. All right, what we want to see here is to have him he, he wants to be able to read the defense all right so he wants to not necessarily just how his guy's playing him with jack near right here but he also wants to be able to read how the defense is playing off ball all right and if dane smith is just staring at jack near he's not going to know how these five guys uh, off ball are playing defensively right now all right so it's very important that one, he looks at Jack Near, and then two, we're looking at everybody else behind the play, okay? From an offensive standpoint, all right, we want to make sure that we're creating space for this Dodger, all right? You guys will see Fricaro, Fricaro here in a second. He's actually going to clear down and then through out to this backside to give him even more space, all right? So his move is probably to replace – behind where he goes, all right? So if he comes top side right-handed here, Picaro's gonna kind of end up on this backside wing, all right, in this kind of shooter area, okay? Now, from a dodging point of view, all right, we bring this back. All right, we wanna read how, how Jack Near's playing us, all right? And he's kind of shading underneath a little bit, not exactly giving us the middle of the field, but he's, his top shoulder all right, is below our downfield shoulder as a Dodger. All right? So we, we can get to the middle of the field here if we really feel like we want to get there. All right? And with that being said, all right, it's very, very advantageous to an offense when you can get to the middle of the field and have all six guys in front of the cage in very dangerous and threatening spots. All right, so as we fast forward through this, all right, we get this playing. All right, Jack Near gives him a little bit of a cross check, all right, but not enough to prevent uh, number 92 from getting to the middle of the field here. And what we're also seeing is we're using our lead shoulder here and our right foot all right, to really get us to the point of the field where we want to get to. All right, so that's kind of like our lead shoulder and our lead foot are both going to plant in the ground and we're going to kind of bear in towards the cage right now okay so as we hit play here all right you can see all right now in a college and high school uh game right now youth level all right this is going to be called 10 times out of 10 okay so we can see the free hand preventing him from really running forward right now all right so you know that's something that you very rarely will be able to get away with but at the high school and college level if you guys can get to this level and, and accelerate through this all right, and bear in at the cage, you're going to become a really, really difficult dodger to defend. All right, what we want to be able to do is at this point, all right, we want to make sure that we can have 
multiple options to be outlets, all right, multiple options to be a feeder, okay? So one thing that we'll always have in any offense, or you should have in any offense, is an outlet in front of the ball and an outlet behind the ball, all right? So as we hit play here, again, you guys can now see our two outlets in Fercaro and Miles Jones in front of the ball, okay? What we also just created here offensively, all right, was when Fercaro cleared through, all right, we now put this defender in a very, very tough situation. He's got to decide, am I the slide guy or am I not the slide guy, all right? If he decides to go, all right, then we'll have the throwback here to Fercaro, all right? but he doesn't do that, all right? He stays with his guy, all right? Which allows us to continue to bear him, all right? And at this point, when we see Garrett Apple become the slide guy, all right, we create a pretty clear 2v1, all right, in this situation right here, all right? Now, Landis has a really, really tough split, and it's very difficult for him to cover both of these two guys, all right? One thing that I do want to talk about is Buchanan's body language right now. All right, we can see he's here, triple threat, stick up right on his ear, wanting the ball the entire time. All right, and that's how you should always look off ball. All right, this is a guy to me as a Dodger, and when I see this, that's a guy that wants the ball right now. All right, and again, the next thing that we're also reading as a Dodger is does this guy, Pat Harbison, do a really good job and help take this pass away, all right? We also want to be cognizant of the fact that we are about 15 seconds into our shot clock, so we do have plenty of opportunity right now to continue to play offense, all right? We don't need to think that we got to score right away in order for our offense to be successful, all right? We can definitely wind this thing down. Uh, many offenses uh, and many high schools throughout the country don't play with a shot clock, and that's okay, all right? So worst comes to worst. We can always throw this ball forward here to Miles Jones, and we can allow Miles Jones to attack. Right. Instead, we, we, we rush a pass. All right. And this is a very, very important concept here all right, from Connor Fields. And this is one thing that if you're a high school coach, a youth coach, a club coach, whatever it is, all right, it does not matter to me. All right. This is a very important skill, and, and it's, it doesn't really take a lot of talent All right, but when Connor Fields picks up this ground ball, all right, one, he does it with two hands. All right, and one thing that we can do is we want to make sure that, that Miles Jones is providing an outlet, all right, so that Connor Fields can just get the ball and move it to him, or Miles Thompson is providing an outlet on the backside and we're able to get the ball away. All right, he, know, he might know that he's got a short stick matchup, but that's okay. If we give him the ball, he can throw it right back to us and then we continue to play. Okay. All right. What we just did was we wanted to allow Miles Jones to make this decision, all right? Because one of these defenders could have tried to, you know, change this matchup here defensively, and that way we might want to get the ball to the backside and let, you know, another teammate attack. But right now we have a really good situation where we have Connor Fields matched up against the short stick, all right? And you're going to see two different kind of types of dodges uh, in this clip, all right, that we're talking about in general. So the first one, we saw Dane Smith was kind of getting gooned up a little bit. The guy was getting out there, cross-checking him, being a little bit more physical, and really tried to fight him, all right? And this is the opposite, all right? So Connor Fields here matched up against the short stick, all right? And you guys will see, all right, the Redwoods defenders, all right, here, 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 and here are all going to have their eyes on Connor Fields as he's dodging, okay? So when we get to here, all right, we're not really getting cross-checked. We're not really, uh, you know, the defender doesn't have his hands on us. It's not really a fight at this point to get to a spot on the field. Connor Fields has a step on his man, all right? And we can see all five of those Redwoods defenders looking right at Connor Fields right now, all right? And, you know, with that being said, this off-ball action where these two guys cut – where we see Buchanan cut down and then Miles Thompson cut into this gap. 
really creates opportunities for Connor Fields to really dissect the defense right now. Okay, what he's able to do right now with this little bit of a slow dodge, all right, is he's able to really see how the defense is recovering, really see how the defense is rotating, and see how the defense is going to play this whole situation out. All right, he does a great job at this point of not continuing to run into not doing it. this gap and have something you know, not be there, right? So he allows this situation to develop by just being kind of patient with this. So he doesn't force this to happen, all right? When we get to this point here, all right, again, one thing that we have, all right, as an offensive kind of group, this guy wants the ball. Buddy. Really wants the ball, all right? And this guy wants the ball as well. So you got three guys with their sticks up being very dangerous, all right? Another guy that cut hard, Buchanan, he realizes that he's not going to get this ball right now. So there's no need for him to continue his cut to really, you know, clog this area up back here and allow this 2v1 to happen. Okay. Miles Thompson inside, he does a great job of presenting inside and wanting the ball here. All right. So when one of these two guys slides here defensively, Miles Tom or Connor Fields is going to be able to see is it the back pipe? Is it the high crease? Is it the skip through? He's got all three options that he can make. All right. So as Connor Fields, the Dodger, he's got the back pipe feed. He's got the high crease feed. He's got the skip to the back side. And when all else fails and the defense does a really good job, he's going to have this outlet forward to Miles Jones. And that's really good. Uh, that's, those are three really good opportunities. And the fourth is a safety net for this thing to completely play out, all right? When it's all said and done, though, Connor Fields makes the decision that he goes with, and we got to stick with that, all right? He's a very, very talented player. It's, he doesn't want to turn the ball over. He's trying to make a play for his team, and that's okay, all right? When it's all said and done, Garrett Apple right here makes a really, really incredible play, knocks the ball down, gets the stop for the offense or for the defense, all right? What I'm going to do now is before I get to your questions, uh, I have a, a drill that I want to share with you guys uh, that we did in practice. Um, let me change my virtual background. All right. All right. We're going to call this the pipe or high crease drill. All right. And how this is set up. And, and after I do the drill, we'll, I'll kind of get to your questions. All right. So that we're kind of all on the same page here. All right. So how this is going to work. All right. So number two has got a ball here. Number three has got a ball on this side. All right. You guys can add the opportunity for these guys to throw back and forth to each other, all right? But we'll leave them where they are right now. We'll have a bunch of balls here. We'll have kind of, you know, th uh, you know, five, six, seven, eight will be back here. You know, eight, nine, ten will be back here maybe, all right? Your attackmen are going to be in these two low lines right here where one and four are, all right? And you guys can gear this towards your offense and how you want your action to happen and where you want your players, all right? So if you feel really com comfortable with your – Midfielders playing down low, or you want your attackman playing up high at times. Maybe you have a guy that's kind of a swing guy. You can play him up high as well. All right. The drill that we're going to show you guys, all right, and I have a clip of this coming next, all right, is going to be of this guy attacking this top side cone. All right. He's going to roll and attack this inside cone right here. All right. He's going to, number two is working with number one, number three, and number four are working together. All right. And what you guys, if you guys want to be, you know, a little bit safer, you guys can put cones right down the middle of the field right here. All right. Three is going through the same movement on this side. All right. The only variance that's happening right now is number one can make a decision on whether or not he just kind of flashes with a little quick cut right here. All right. He might just sit right here on this pipe. All right. Or he might clear through early. All right, and find space right here on the high crease. All right, same thing with number four. And again, he might, you know, kind of come flat right here. He might just come sit right here on this pipe, all right? Or he might come clear through and become a high C, all right? One thing that's going to be really tough with this drill is as this midfielder, you don't know exactly where this guy is going to be, all right? And likewise, you might not know exactly where the slider is coming from defensively, especially if you guys turn your back. So when we get to this point and we're here, all right, we're trying to have our eyes up to see our teammate because we might have to make this feed 
we might have to make this feed, all right? And we're also might have to make this feed, all right? So all feeds that we just kind of saw happen with Dane Smith getting to the middle field and Connor Fields getting to his kind of spot on the island, all right? So you guys can maybe do this as, as two guys on one side, all right? There is another opportunity where you can add in a defender as this low guy, and this guy's got to read how he goes. So if he helps in to the crease, all right, we might want to kind of take this little quick cut right here. All right, if he decides that maybe he's going to establish and become a slide guy, it could be worth coming right here. All right, or you could potentially follow the slide guy. All right, so give your guys a little bit of options to see how they want to play it. And you can also allow your guys to be creative with how they're finishing these. All right, and I'm going to get back to the screen share here in a second so you guys can see how the drill plays out in real time. All right, so here we go. All right, again, we're going to have our – we have our offensive guys down here. We do have a goalie in play, all right? And what's happening right now is we're having these guys both start with the ball, all right? So this guy's going through his role. This guy's going through his move, all right? And these are authentic dodges to score, all right? When we get our head around, all right, now we're reading to where our, our teammate is right now, all right? So as we let this thing play out, so Austin Madronic, you know, he stays on the edge of the crease. All right, Miles Ham gets a little bit of a, a sky whammy here, all right, and then comes in front and finish it. All right, another guy here curls right to the high crease. All right, and now this guy's got to make a different pass than he may have just made earlier. So now this one might become a step away to get my hands free. This might become a top hand lever pass to put it right on this guy's ear. All right, but also at the same point, this guy wants to make sure he's giving this guy an opportunity to run through the ball, catch, and now finish. All right, dropping our hips on the roll, good. Coming out, finding that guy, good, All right? We'll watch this top side now. All right, so as, Kyle, as we come into this, all right, we come out of this with our head up, we wanna be able to make all these feeds, all right? And one way that you guys can do this if you wanna alter it, as this guy comes out of this, he might look for this guy flashing to the backside, he might look for this guy flashing into the high seat. So you guys can tweak this all right, to mimic any offense that you guys want and how you guys are, 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 are playing. All right? One way that we have done this is we've just started with our midfielders here, and they are attacking this way with an attackman where they are right now, and then we're reading a defender. If this defender slides up field, all right, then we're able to – hit this guy on maybe a curl. If he stays low, then this guy's able to shoot. All right, and we'll let this kind of play out. So you guys can do this a multitude of ways. All right, allow your guys to be creative and don't be afraid to mix in some defensive guys all right, to make this a read and react situation. All right, here we go. Now I want to get to some questions. All right, so uh, ultimate lacks. Uh, would you have preferred that clear through get behind his defender's helmet instead of cutting, cutting in front? How much do you emphasize this at Harvard? All right, so we'll go. Uh, he's talking about the uh, clear through that uh, that Jake Fricaro had uh, on the initial dodge behind. Um, I, I, I think it was Brian Carolunas's head. All right, and I think that's a great way to create a little bit of indecision on your defender. And I think that's an opportunity for you to really create a little bit of confusion uh, with those guys. So if you're able to, and, and it's all about timing and spacing, I'd rather you cut in front of that guy uh, and almost seal him off and prevent him if you're going to be late. But if you have the timing to really get through and to a spot where you're an effective outlet for the guy, um, you know, I think that becomes a little bit more effective as opposed to, you know, being late and getting behind that guy's head. Okay. Uh, from Jay Layden, uh, do you guys work a lot on 
on ball support off the ground ball? If so, what kind of things do you emphasize? Uh, so that's a great question. I think, uh, you know, one thing that we emphasize is trying to move the ball immediately. All right. And you might have to get your hands free. So you might run for, you know, two or three steps. But one thing is if, if I know that the guy to my left just got a ground ball, he's probably getting attacked right now. And I want to make sure that I'm doing my best to sprint and support him. All right. I can then make the decision if my teammate gives me the ball, just like we saw Miles Jones. I can make the decision of getting the ball to the backside where I can throw the ball right back to him, or I can maybe look through and there might be a little bit of unknown and a little bit of chaos that's happening on the crease. And there could be a guy that just got lost in the shuffle. Right? So we want to make sure that we get it to a guy that can make a decision. So I think at the youth level, uh, it might be a great idea to try and move the ball two times uh, because, you know, that's going to be away from where the ground ball scrum just happened. But if it's kind of a one-on-one -on -one ground ball, like we just saw with Pat Harbison and Connor Fields, moving that ball, uh, you know, one time I think should be uh, sufficient enough. So uh, are the Dodgers all attack men or are you running midi and attack from the one and two sides? Uh, so, you know, how we did that drill was we had all of our middies, uh, the way that we just showed it, all of our middies were the Dodgers. So they were all numbers two and number three. And then we had all of our attack men playing the, the finishing roles, right? And we would also do a drill kind of based off of that, that, you know, the attack men were now the feeders and the midfielders were the finishers so that guys were getting reps of both ways. Guys were getting reps of being a feeder or guys were getting a reps of, of shooting. Um, and, you know, that's a, a great opportunity there uh, for you to mix in, uh, you know, guys getting different reps. So if you want to do it so that uh, as you came out and you were being the feeder, now that midfielder comes down low and he becomes a guy that's reading, all right, am I clearing through? Am I, you know, flashing quick to the pipe? What am I doing? All right. The one thing that I think we should always have is you should always have your stick up by your ear and always demanding the ball from your teammate. Uh, how do you teach the low guys the menu of options for their cuts? Uh, I think that's a, a great question from C. Arnold or Carnold. Uh, I'm not sure uh, which one that is, but. Uh, you know, that goes back to kind of, you know, this was a drill that we did uh, later in the year. Uh, so it starts back at the, the beginning of the year and kind of some basics to it. So we'll talk about the clear throw and we'll have everybody rep through the clear throw and when a good time to do that is. And, uh, you know, well, then we'll talk about the quick cut and when a good time to do that. Uh, and so that way you're giving your guys, you know, like you say, the menu of their options on their cuts. And, you know, we'll also talk about that in film sessions of when would be a good time for that to happen. Uh, you can put guys in there defensively that might be an attackman or a midfielder, and now they read, they get to see it happen themselves. All right, so that's a, a great thing to have. You know, a great learning tool is all right, what makes it really tough for a defender to guard right now. So if they see that guy clearing through and it's tough for that guy to get back, they might want to do that. All right, and if they see a, a quick cut, you know, that could be a good opportunity there. The other opportunity there is uh, if you know, playing to your strong hand. So if you're a right-handed guy on that left-handed pipe, you probably more oftentimes than not saw those guys clear through to the high crease, all right? Where a left-handed guy may have done the quick cut or he may have done the sit on the pipe, come to the front and turn the corner, all right? So that's kind of how we teach that. Uh, any other questions before I give a, a little bit of a bathroom break for guys to, uh, to uh, you know, stay in for Coach Burns' presentation? All right. Thank you guys. I really appreciate it. And uh, if anybody has any questions, feel free to reach out and I uh, hope everybody has a, a healthy and safe weekend.